Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody, um, to my talk about liver PCB. My name is uh, Urban Bruhin from I'm so, from Switzerland, and yeah. So first, um, what's liver PCB? It's actually similar to Horizon, an EDA tool, a, a new open source EDA tool. Um, it's uh, multi-platform, so it works on um, Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. And it's written from scratch in C++ and Qt. And I started the uh, development in uh, about five, five years ago. So, yeah, and there's uh, the code is on GitHub, so you can check it out. And first, the reason why I created a new EDA tool, um, basically also the frustration about existing tools. Um, five years uh, before now, uh, uh, think about how KiCad was then and so on, and it was, uh, I, I, I was really frustrated about the existing tools. And the ma main reason is basically the library system, which is very limited in other tools. And also the file format, especially when using version control systems, um, other EDA tools, um, yeah, they have a file format. If it's, uh, maybe it's binary, then yeah, <laughs> good luck. But uh, if you have luck, then uh, it's text-based, but still not very good suited um, for version control. And also the usability is uh, often not very great of the tool. So about uh, something about the library management. Um, one thing is um, other tools um, have different uh, library file formats for different kind of library types. So, for example, one library type for components, one for uh, footprints, and so on. And I think this is not really um, nice for users because maybe the tool some, some time has uh, adds support for spice models or something like that. It also introduces a new file format for libraries. And yeah. And the other thing is tools do not really completely handle library management. So there is often no integrated tool to install and update libraries. Um, if libraries have dependencies, so um, the, the tool does not handle this. So you as a user uh, need to handle dependency management. And the project library management is also a little bit complicated sometimes. So the result is actually the user has a lot of work to handle or to manage his libraries he wants to use, and that's quite a pain. So, um, for example, as an Eagle user, you maybe know this website where you search for libraries, download something, and install it manually. Or in KiCad, uh, in the schematic editor, um, this is the library configuration dialog, or in the foot, um, board editor. Um, I see a lot of file paths there, and some uh, environment variables, and path substitutions, and project-specific libraries, global libraries, and so on. And I asked myself, why is this so complicated? I just want to use these libraries. so. Um, my answer is it doesn't have to be that complicated. So in LibrePCB, I integrated the library manager um, to uh, update and install libraries. And it also has a, a simple library uh, dependency management system. So if you download a library, which li library A, which depends on library B, library B is automatically installed when you install library, library A. And Probably the, the most important thing is the application basically handles everything for you. So you don't have to care about libraries. They just work. So because there is no reason to make this very complicated. And another thing is um, actually similar to the Horizon tool. Um, the problem of other tools is they reference many things 
just by name. And in some tools, it's even not possible to reference uh, library ele elements between uh, across libraries. So you can't use a component from library A um, with a symbol from library B and so on. And the result is uh, there are often broken references when changing names or name conflicts and many duplicates because um, yeah, they cannot be shared between libraries. And the solution is actually the same as in Horizon. We use UUIDs for every kind of um, every entity in the library. So every symbol, every pin, every pad, everything has a UUID which never changes. So you can change the names and so on, and it doesn't have any effect. Uh, it doesn't break anything. So. And it's also possible to reference libraries across, li uh, uh, reference entities across different libraries. Uh, for example, if you take a look at the uh, file format of LibrePCB, which is based on S expressions, you can see that there are many UUIDs there. For example, a symbol looks like that. Uh, at the top is the UUID of the symbol itself. And the name is just a property which uh, you can change any time. And the same for every pin. So another problem of existing library uh, systems is there is no way to have different symbols for the same component. So for example, uh, a resistor can have an American or a European symbol, and, but there is no solution for that in, in many tools. And this re results in duplicated components with same exactly same functionality but different symbol. In, for example, in Eagle, it looks like this. So if you have a resistor component and its resistor symbol, and the resistor has, for example, three devices, um, it looks like that. And if you want to have an American resistor symbol, you have to create an American resistor component. And you can't use the device from the European resistor, so you have to copy them. And maybe there is even another variant of the symbol, and you have many duplicates of devices. And this is quite a mess, so the quality of library uh, gets worse and worse. Yeah. So the solution of Libre PCBs, there is a, uh, an entity called uh, component sim symbol variant. So there is only one component for a resistor, and it can have as many uh, rep representation variants as you like. So you can create one for the European symbol, one for the American, or what, whatever you want. A similar problem is with um, packages or footprints, because libraries do not have an abstraction layer for packages. For example, this TO220 package, this is three times the same package, but three different footprints. And this is quite common. For example, you have different footprints for di uh, different mounting variants or different uh, size of uh, pads, because one for reflow soldiering, one for hand soldiering, and so on. But libraries do not provide a way to abstract this. And so the result is every device needs to know every footprint variant of their package. For example, um, if you have a voltage regulator in a TO220 package, um, there's one um, relation between them. If you have one more uh, device using that footprint, you have one more relation. But if you have some different footprint for the same device, for example, this time without the mounting hole, you have many to many uh, relations. And let's add one more uh, device and more footprints. And you can see you have a many to many relation between devices and footprint. And that's quite a, a nightmare in a library system. So LibrePCB adds uh, an entity called package, which 
doesn't know anything about footprints directly, but only what paths it has. And a device references only a package, and the package can contain as many footprint variants as you like. So the next problem is uh, version control systems. It, um, it's quite hard to version control EDA uh, files because it, often important and unimportant data is mixed. So you cannot uh, just check in the important data, but not the uh, unimportant. And it's often even unclear rich files to put on the version control and, and which not. And the uh, typical uh, results is you have local changes even if you didn't modify anything in a project or very large diffs and merging is uh, for sure impossible. And LibrePCB solves this by using many uh, smaller files instead of one single big file. So it's, uh, you have higher granularity and you can easily uh, distinguish between uh, imported and unimportant data. And one very simple um, improvement is the tool automatically cr creates a git ignore file, so the user doesn't need to know which files to check in or not. And another thing is, um, this is an, a diff of a KiCad PCB file. I just created the PCB, opened the editor, uh, zoomed around, uh, switched some, toggled some layers on and off, saved the project, and looked at the diff. And this is the diff. And you can see there are changes which actually you don't want to check in these because they are only irrelevant data. And the, at the bottom, the, there is actually, the diff is one bit of some number. I don't know the exact reason of it. And this brings me to the next point. Files are not really human readable. So diffs are hard to understand and a version control system um, are hard to use on these files. So my solution is basically, first, don't just consider text-based file formats as human readable. Not every text-based file format is human readable. You, you need to control every tiny detail of the file format to, met, to make it as readable as possible. And in LibrePCB, I consider parts of files which are not really human readable as box, and box need to be fixed. So um, the current project status is actually the library management works uh, pretty good. The library editor has only um, basic features. It works kind of, but not very good. And the schematic editor is also working pretty good, except some important features like copy and paste. And the board editor is, is at the moment at the moment, uh, work in progress. So uh, there are no planes yet, no air wires, uh, no design rule check, and so on. But Gerber export is uh, possible, basically. And of course, the available libraries are, <laughs> there aren't many libraries available. But, and the most important thing is uh, the file format is not yet considered as stable. So you can use LibrePCB already for some simple um, PCBs. <laughs> but don't expect that you can open the files, uh, for example, in a year with the newer version. So, To get started, there are uh, nightly builds available at the moment for Linux and Windows, and also some documentation. Okay, now let's show a short demo. Uh, this is actually just the app image I started directly downloaded from the internet. Oh. Um, this is the, only the first time it says to create a workspace. Then the project, uh, the control panel says you need to install some libraries. So you open the library manager and these are the libraries uh, available in the internet. And for example, I want to install this library. It also selects the library here because they are dependencies. So, and I, if I unselect this, this is also gone. So let's install these libraries. They are downloaded from the internet. And here we have some whatever 
some libraries. Okay, so now let's create a new project. Then the schematic editor is here. And um, as an example, I just add some components so you can see how the workflow would be. For example, uh, capacitors are now available in the European symbol or the American symbol. You know, so you can just add the American variant. Or you can also choose uh, only a component or an exact device. It doesn't matter. So this one is just an engine MOSFET without uh, choosing already a footprint. So maybe ground, VCC, make some connections, whatever. Doesn't make sense, but <laughs> so, OK. Um, now in the board editor, we can see there are three parts. Uh, which are missing on the board right now. So we, we can choose, for example, the resistor, choose uh, the exact device, edit, and the other devices. And for, for example, the MOSFET, we have two devices available at the moment. And for the uh, TO220 device, we can also choose between the different mounting variants. So let's add this one. And one cool feature is also you can copy a board. Then you have two times the same board and can work independently on them. So you can, so for example, in this board, you want to use the, the other device. You can just switch to the other one. Or you can also um, choose just the other mounting variant. And also the board and the schematic is also in sync is always in sync. So for example, if I remove one resistor, it disappears from both uh, boards in the time. Uh, yeah, it's so it's like an eagle, basically. <laughs> and yeah, you can, OK, uh, that's. So you can't actually do that. You can only delete from schematic, not from board. Sorry? In eagle, you cannot delete from the board. You Oh, OK. It's, right now, it's also not possible in, in LibrePCV to, to delete from the board, but it's planned to do that. So uh, if I delete something, it appears in this list because it's not added to, the, to this board. But here, it's still available in the other board. So OK, and after, let's say you have, OK, that's just uh, because the, I, I said already the board editor is in work in progress. So. There are some yeah, strange things. And there is even uh, a very simple uh, Gerber exporter wi without any option. But you just click Generate and open the directory. And if you didn't, don't trust me, the files are generated in this. So yeah. So you can just open them with GerbView, for example. And here it is. So <laughs> very simple, but it works. OK, so I think this is, yeah. So now the next steps. The first, uh, the, the highest pr priority at the moment is to stabilize the file format. So do the loss breaking changes and to create the first stable release. and. For that, I also make, need to make the board editor really usable <laughs> because it doesn't uh, make fun like that. And, but it's already possible to, to uh, order PCBs. So. And yeah, the next step is add more functionality. But yeah. So contributors welcome, of course. And yeah, that's it. Hey, what's uh, what's it written in? Uh, the, the language, language. Yeah. C plus eleven and Q five.
<laughs> okay, the question was uh, again, <laughs> why not uh, instead contributing to KiCad? And actually, my answer is uh, similar to the Horizon one, because I think um, the, the library system is, is that important part of a, of a EDA tool, and it's it's a very fundamental, uh, low-level part, and it's very hard to change this uh, concept. And I think in LibrePCB, the concept is completely different than in KiCad. So, uh, Okay, but um, it's a subject for discussion later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> More questions. Yeah. Have you considered taking into account bit of material? Because you know when you design your schematics and it's PCB, but then when it comes into actually purchasing uh, devices or tools, you can have many variants of each component depending on the top really the design of the tool, but in terms of manufacturing, that's not that something that needs to be kept in terms of control. And that's a nice feature I've never seen. So, so, so your, your question is the, the the generic devices where where to order them then? Or? Yeah. So yeah, the, 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 so the question is the, the part numbers, uh, are they part order codes and par exact part num numbers and so on? If they are included in the library and the current answer is uh, at, the moment, at the moment it's not part of the library but I already have plans how to integrate it so it will be in the library later. So. Sorry, where, where, where is only one? No multiple views that you see it perhaps the whole layout where you are in where you want to start and where you want to end, and you see uh, you have another window where you are where you, at a much larger scale. Um, I'm not sure you're asking about the board editor or. Uh, is it intended, for example? Does it have? Can you have multiple oh, views? Okay, okay. Is it intended to have multiple views of the same board, basically, yeah. uh, with other uh, uh, re uh, re regions? Yeah. Um, it's it's not planned this time, but of course it would be useful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I, we don't have time for more. Let's thank Urban again. Okay. Thanks.